previously on Avatar. What? Oh man, okay, okay. I think Harry has improved to the point where it might be time for another poet's analysis. You feel me? I think it might be time for another one. I... That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> Okay, so before we get started, I just want to say, if you haven't watched my first Harry Mack analysis that I put out around this time last year, that's okay. You do not need to watch it to enjoy this one. I'm just going to give you a quick summary of what that one covered, and then give a brief explanation of what this one will cover. In my first analysis, I pull from a plethora of Omegle bars in order to break down the five major pillars of Harry Mack's rap techniques. The first pillar is appeals to pathos, in which he makes emotional connections with his audience. The second is narration, in which he addresses what he sees and hears from the audience before he begins the freestyle and even during the freestyle. The third is lyrical gymnastics, which is a fancy way of saying the bars, okay? So the wordplay, the multisyllabic rhymes, the metaphors, etc. The fourth would be the vocal techniques he utilizes in order to ensure he doesn't run out of breath and get tongue-tied, and ultimately the inflections he utilizes in his voice in order to wow the audience. And finally, the choreography, being the facial expressions, the movement he makes in order to ensure he's staying on beat. The link to that analysis will be in the video description below, so check it out if you're interested. This analysis, however, will be covering what many fans have called his greatest Omegle bars. Yep, that's right, Omegle bars 52. And we'll place particular emphasis on the one thing my previous analysis did not address, rhyme schemes. In fact, I have color-coded almost every single rhyme that the Freestyles and 52 have to offer, and you will be amazed by what you see. I didn't color code every single rhyme because that would have just been exhausting and a bit unnecessary. I just want you to get the general scope of the rhymes and their arrangements throughout the freestyle. All right, now quick disclaimer, I haven't watched any Omegle bars past 61. So if there's a better one than 52 that the fan base is acknowledging as the best one, sorry, I don't know about it yet. So I can't comment on that. For now, let's begin breaking down what many fans have considered to be the greatest Omegle bars of all time. And here we go. Beginning with Omegle Bars 52.1, aka the first freestyle of Omegle Bars 52, I am telling y'all this one is insane. My favorite by far. Look, there's not a single stutter in the entire freestyle. Zero hiccups, zero times getting tongue-tied. There's not a single vocal error made, not even a minor one, which is kind of wild because even for Harry, as good as he is, he makes mistakes here and there. You know what I'm saying? But there's none in this one. Now keep in mind, I've arranged the majority of the lyrics into quatrains, which are four line stanzas, and this will give most of them an A-A-B-B -B rhyme scheme, meaning the first two lines end on words that rhyme with each other, and the last two lines end on words that rhyme with each other. Harry uses an array of end rhymes and internal rhymes of varying complexity throughout this freestyle, ranging anywhere from one syllable rhymes to six syllable rhymes. Unlike most of Harry's other freestyles, this one doesn't construct separate schemes for each given word. Instead, the schemes are more fluid in the sense that they blend into one another, meaning that instead of sticking to one of the given words and then moving on to the next one for good, in this freestyle, he goes back and forth between the given words. This makes Harry even less predictable than he usually is, since the audience can't figure out a pattern of when he will address each word. Uh. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, uh, come on, yeah. H Mac getting loose with the music, whether it be amplified or acoustic, shine like star delivering bars. I can make your head nod with an acoustic guitar. Come on, think you on the same level, y'all should try again. Acoustic instruments like the violin They be saying Mac is crazy We ain't never getting bored of bruh Cause he's like a one man orchestra oh, Okay, sorry He brought up the violin just as the violin hopped in Y'all noticed that? Oh my god, he knows his instrumentals Uh, I'ma kick the hype as facts My vocals are acoustic so let's hold a mic to that Uh, standing up prouder Crushing rappers in the powder Got the microphone to make it louder Blast it through the speakers Y'all getting consumed I'm in the studio with prime acoustics in my room Yeah, and every time I'm finished rapping Leave the beat bent Before I rhyme, had to set up the acoustic treatment Yo, my lyrics too astounding to y'all 
without the padding My vocal tone would bounce off the wall Yeah, and that's something I just couldn't really let go Gotta sound clean, dry vocals with no echo yeah. In the first stanza, Harry utilizes a poetic technique called antithesis In which you juxtapose two opposing concepts In this case, those two opposing concepts are amplified and acoustic his mention of amplified acoustic and acoustic guitar is in reference to the instrumental, which has both amplified sounds and acoustic guitar sounds. These also serve as word associations for music. Some other word associations for music would be, well, the word music, delivering bars, and head nod. Let's move on. In the next stanza, he actually makes reference to one of the instruments being utilized in the instrumental, that being the violin. And in the stanza that follows, he actually ends the first two lines of that quatrain on a four-syllable rhyme. The hypest facts, a mic to that. In the preceding stanza, he says, I'm in the studio with prime acoustics in my room. Prime Acoustic is a manufacturer of acoustic materials of all types. It's not surprising that Harry Mack knows and uses these products given his musical endeavors. He then goes on to say that the padding allows him to create vocals without echo, which creates stark contrast with the reverb stanza and the echo stanza that follow. No echo, yeah, y'all know that I leave them amazed Let's add some reverb, turn the acoustics to like a cave Yeah, I drop a verse like I'm in a massive church Throughout the whole cathedral, my lyrics will disperse I Oh my god, the church bars, y'all know Bible verse, you know what I'm saying? But also like song verse, okay, come on I stand at edge of Grand Canyon, then I let it echo, echo, echo Got the mic up in my palm, I never let go, let go, let go Matter of fact, the acoustics, they be enhanced, hands, hands Every time I'm rhyming, I'ma make you dance, dance, dance. It is famous for its echo. Well, what do you know? Let's take turns yelling into the canyon. Lisa, you start. Okay. Boring! Lisa! Bro, what? Stop! Okay, I keep pausing it. Man, they can't take my mic away. I be rocking for the homie while he's puffing on the J. Yeah, every time I'm rhyming, man, my lyrics are on point. Uh, my vocals is about to get you higher than the joint. Yeah, H-Mac, I'm about to make it happen. I do more harm. I'm a work of art just like the tattoo on your forearm. H-Mac, man, I'm breaking down the notion. Smooth as lotion. He be in the Hawaiian shirt. Keep it open. I be swinging like your necklace. People, they expect this. Known across the planet because my lyrics are infectious. Yeah, every time I grab the mic, I'm here to rock your fella It don't matter if I'm over beats or spitting acapella Even with no music, electric or acoustic I'm ready to do this, my vocal tone soothing, always improving I'm not a rapper, dog, I'm a movement, so let's make it happen Difference between me and these other cats, they lack your passion uh, When I'm rhyming, they be going crazy My demeanor is cool like your window AC H-Mac, man, I spit how I live Piece of the homie who be not in sitting outside the crib Reverb is created when a sound occurs in a space that will send the sound waves out in all directions. Spaces like caves and cathedrals can generate this effect, often perceived as an echo. That's why he vocalizes the echo sound in the very next stanza. His use of the word verse is actually a double entendre at work, being that you can either drop a song verse or a Bible verse within a church. The moment Harry says this line, if you look closely enough, you can see the viewer actually begins to sway to the music more than before. And you can tell Harry notices this too because he dedicates the next three stanzas to addressing the viewer and calling out what he notices about him. He mentions that his viewer is puffing on the J, and if there's any confusion about what that means, two lines later he explains it quite clear. My vocal's about to get you higher than a joint, right? So puffing on the J means smoking a joint. He then goes on to mention the work of art, like the tattoo on your forearm, right? So he's mentioning the tattoo, the Hawaiian shirt, keep it open, right? He's seeing these things about the audience member and addressing it. So that's his narration ability at work. He later makes a possible reference to COVID, if you ask me, being that Omega Bars 52 came out during quarantine, right? He says, known across the planet because my lyrics are infectious. Sound familiar? Kind of reminds me of the pandemic. Am I wrong or am I right? In the next two lines, again, we have a four syllable rhyme. Rockefella and then acapella. The stanza that follows has arguably the best organization of what I call intentional rhymes in the entire freestyle. By intentional rhymes, I simply mean rhymes that did not occur by chance or happenstance. There's no way to prove 100% which rhymes are intentional or which are not, outside of end rhyme of course, since rhymes are likely to occur in natural speech on any given day and especially in a rap. But the way that Harry arranges and times the rhymes in this stanza lead me to believe that most, if not all of them are intentional. Let me explain. Notice how many of the rhymes stack nicely on top of each other like bricks. No is on top of tone. 
music is on top of soothing acoustic is on top of improving and a movement make it happen is on top of they lack in passion do y'all see that the organization of the rhymes lead me to believe that they are all intentional and that none of them occurred by happenstance Again, we see Harry's attention to detail on full display. While before he was addressing the viewer's physical appearance, such as the tattoo on the forearm, the open Hawaiian shirt, now he's addressing the temperament, actions, and environment of the viewer. The temperament being that his demeanor is cool. The actions of the viewer in the sense that the homie's nodding and sitting, and the environment of the viewer, such as the window and the fact that he's outside. Yeah, hey yo, I be old school like a relic. When I rap, I got your brain tripping like psychedelics. Uh, what they telling me, rappers swell up with jealousy. I'm getting hella free. I ain't spitting spit. This is LSD. I hit you harder. Hey yo, these rappers soft, they flaccid. I'm above the average. Matter of fact, you tripping out like acid. H man, I bust, dude. Hey yo, I hop up in the venue and crush rooms. Got you tripping like mushrooms. All around the world, they know me. Got you tripping like you taking some peyote. T. Too much of the Mac, you know you might just. Oh, D, y'all can't lock me down, I came to keep my flow free Sorry, I'm telling them, making it happen whenever I'm rapping I've never been clashing, I'm doing it trippers, you know that I rip it I make it say, ooh, when I just do what I do Mac, I've been keeping it true, spread like the flu, spread like the COVID I got you doing like this with your shoulders Hulling my lyrics, they sounding much colder You know I'll still be rhyming when older Already got all the gray in my beard, yeah Representing the wisdom, come off the top with the vision yeah. In the stanza that follows, we have two pairs of four-syllable end rhymes four in total. The next stanza is unique for two reasons. One, it has five lines, which means it is a quintain or a quintet. The other reason being it has a ridiculous amount of word associations. And these word associations can be grouped into two sections. The first group of word associations revolve around taking drugs, such as hit, trippin', acid, crush, and mushrooms. The other group of word associations <laughs> is a bit cheeky in the sense that it's all references to the male appendage. Those associations being harder, soft, flaccid, above the average, bust, and again, mushrooms. So I suppose out of all the word associations, mushrooms is the most unique in the sense that it fits into both groups, both categories. I've heard many fans call Harry Mack a human encyclopedia, and I can understand why when I consider how many times I've had to Google certain facts he brings up in his freestyles. Omega Bars 52 is no different. After searching on Google, I learned that peyote is a cactus plant that contains an hallucinogenic compound called mescaline? Mescaline? I don't know. So peyote fits with the other drug associations in the stanza, like trippin and OD, which stands for overdose. Suddenly, Harry switches his flow, going from using quatrains, which are four-line stanzas, to triplets, which are three-line stanzas. And he even makes reference to this by saying, I'm doing it triplets, you know that I rip it. So he's very conscious of the shift he's making. The triplet flow is common in trap music today, and Harry will sometimes switch to this flow when going double time, aka when he's talking twice as fast. When he uses triplet flow, he often isn't as strict about ending each line on a rhyme, the same way he is with quatrains. Yeah, yo, top the position for me Thanks so much for taking time just to listen to me I appreciate it much while you smoking the Dutch You got the J-roll proper and you grip on the crutch yeah, Doing what I'm feel and you know that it's stupendous Your word was acapella so here's how we gon' end this Acapella the word, I spit it absurd I take the beat out cause I'm too sick to ever be cured I can still feel the rhythm when I'm spitting my vision I don't write it down ahead, I use my own intuition I shine and then I glisten, rhyme when I'm my mission y'all know that my lyrics divine i cause collision i'm crashing spitting with passion i got you doing the stank face even a cappella with no drums to bang bass what yo 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 ah! what oh man okay okay i think harry has improved to the point where it might be time for another poet's analysis you feel me? I think it might be time for another one. In the next stanza, he utilizes six syllable rhymes. The position for me, just to listen to me. These are extremely rare in freestyles. I mean, in lyrical rap nowadays, when it's written short, it might not be the craziest thing, but in a freestyle? Come on, y'all, that's, that's pretty sweet. I ain't gonna lie, even for Harry, that's not the most common thing for him to do, so mad impressive. And Dutch, in case you're wondering, is a style of joint or blunt. 
and crutch is a thick paper or glass tip used in the mouthpiece of a joint to support the paper and facilitate easy smoking of the joint. What follows is arguably the best acapella rhyme sequence to end any Omegle Bars freestyle. Eight lines of pure heat with no instrumental that could have helped him keep a near perfect tempo. Alright y'all, check this out. I take the beat out because I'm too sick to ever be cured. One of my subscribers, Jake Golden, shows why this is one of the coldest lines in Omegle Bars history. Jake states, what happens when you are too sick to be cured? You die. What happens when you die? Your heart stops beating. Hence, take the B out. Y'all, oh my God, like that's just crazy. <laughs> Three things stand out to me about the final quatrain of this freestyle. The first is that it has an A-A-A-A rhyme scheme, meaning all four lines end on words that rhyme, which is unique compared to the other stanzas. The second is that it demonstrates how meta or self-referential Harry's freestyles can be, since he's explaining what he's doing as he's doing it. In spite of the fact that he removed the instrumental, he states that his intuition allows him to improvise words on beat anyway. The third thing that stands out is that the rhymes are well organized so that they stack up really well when visualized on the rhyme scheme color map as you can see here. In the second freestyle, just like with the first freestyle, there's not a single stutter, hesitation, hiccup, or moment of getting tongue-tied. None of that is happening. The man is just flowing and going, not even a minor vocal error to be noticed. That, however, is pretty much where the similarities end between the first and second freestyle because while the first freestyle had a fluid, almost mosaic-like arrangement of the schemes for each given word, the second freestyle has clear separation, dedicating a verse to each given word and then utilizing the final verse to address all five given words. And that's another thing that stands out about this freestyle. There are five given words as opposed to the usual three, one for each member of the audience in this case. This freestyle has three separate double time flows, which is more than usual for him. And each one is very lengthy and complex in comparison to most of his other raps double time moments. In addition, I noticed that this freestyle has less crazy wordplay and multisyllabic rhymes than the first one did, or even freestyles from other Omegle bars. However, you will soon see that this is because he prioritized giving complexity to the arrangement of the rhymes as opposed to the syllable count of the rhymes. To better analyze the arrangement of his rhymes, I decided to color code his rhymed words and phrases instead of the rhymed syllables like I did last time. All right, so keep that in mind. Another thing that makes this freestyle unusual in comparison to some of his others is that he is constantly hopping in and out of triplet flows and double time flows throughout the entire song. Since there's no easily predictable pattern to his rhymes and flows, his audience doesn't know what to expect, which keeps them from being bored at any point during the song. The most notable aspect of this second freestyle is Harry's willingness to deviate from his game plan and adjust to new external stimuli, which are more common occurrences in his Gorilla Bar series, where he's out in public and has to deal with numerous environmental factors that are out of his control. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Rap is just whack. Uh. I might just have to get rid of them. Hey. Check how I rock. Uh. Hold up, wait, no, that's obsidian. Hey, Mac going in. Hey, tell no I'm dropping them pawns. When I be rhyming, I'm locked in the zone. Shout out to Obsidian, that be a stone. H Mac, I be going in, and you know I got the rap pawn. Shouts to Obsidian, that be a black stone. Mac coming off at the top, and I'm racked as my homie got Obsidian all up on the necklace. <laughs> and you know we had to hold it up every time I'm rapping, got him yelling out, holy fuck, uh. Y'all know I got a vibe with the Obsidian necklace, got the pride. Mac, come on, hold it up, and I get love. Not only the necklace, you rapping for the Cubs. Yeah, I can see it all up on the t shirt. They said rap is dead, so this here is the rebirth. I'm about to bring it up the top, I'm about to fling it up. And everybody with the red ricks. Every time I'm doing all my rhymes off the top of the brain, you know it's coming from the spear. Red, Mac, call up on it, and you know that I'm on next. I'll be blowing up, kind of like a bomb threat. Yeah, you know I'm delivering the strong text. Matter of fact, all my lyrics way too complex. Yeah, and it's complicated. Dominate them every time I'm in the session. I'm impressing y'all. Know I'm manifesting all my dreams and shit, and I mean the shit, serene and shit. You know I spit it clean and shit. Yo, he's legit. Every time he throws it down. Yeah, all throughout the industry, you know that instantly my name really about to go around. Uh, yeah, complicated like advanced equations. Ooh, I'm complex with these lyrics. That I'm blazing, yeah. Notice the demeanor of the viewers when he begins. Some of them look disengaged, others look unenthusiastic. Harry knows that the quickest way to grab the attention of such an audience is not through crazy metaphors and wordplay, because those techniques would require his audience to be paying close attention in order to comprehend them. Instead, he resorts to calling out what he sees from the audience and switching between different flows. Since these techniques are easier to perceive, regardless
regardless of whether the audience is paying attention. If it's not clear what I mean, notice how at first he does attempt to utilize wordplay. He says, check how I rock, and this is in reference to the obsidian being a rock, okay? However, he sees that gets some people's attention, but some others not so much. So he's like, okay, I noticed they're not paying the most attention. Let me address what they're wearing. Let me address what I'm seeing from them to force their attention to come to me. You see what I'm saying? I imagine that's what was going through his head, and it certainly worked. After the mention of the obsidian necklace that one of the audience members was wearing, Harry notices that most of their attention is now starting to gravitate towards him, even the guy who's in the gaming chair who's partially distracted by the phone. So the moment he captures that guy's attention, boom, he switches to a double time flow. It's very hard to ignore a double time flow. Most people don't expect that in a freestyle. It catches them off guard and suddenly he's paying full attention to Harry. Yeah, y'all know I've been the dude. I need a complex interview. They better throw my name all on the website when I be killing the game, yelling dead right come off the top of this. Hey, to do around for y'all is my honor, bruh. Every time I leave these rappers down there now, they call me the powerhouse mitochondria. If I ever go to prison, I'm gonna change my name to mitochondria. I want everyone to know I'm the powerhouse of the cell. This mitochondria powerhouse of the cell thing is gonna haunt me till the day I die. H Mac, I'ma change the policy. Mitochondria, you'll be coming from biology. Harry Mac, yo, I'm winning and you know I'm about to triumph. Every time I'm rhyming, you know I'm dropping science. Yeah, you know that I'm doing it well. I'm hotter than hell. I came to excel. Hold up, wait a minute, cell. That's what the mitochondria lives inside. You know I spit with pride. I'm about to flip your vibe. I turn you upside down. All in the whip, we be riding around. H Mac in it, my flow is amazing. Shout out to the homie rapping GT racing. Yeah, I can see it on the chair right now. H Mac spitting with the flair right now. Uh, come off the head with raps. GT racing with the red and black. Yo. He then goes on to say, they call me the powerhouse mitochondria. The mitochondria is often referred to as the powerhouse of the cell because it produces the energy needed to fuel the cell's activity. It is after he has maintained the attention of the audience for an extended period of time that he decides to utilize wordplay once again with the XL cell wordplay there. We can see Harry's thought process at work here. He sees that one of his viewers is sitting in a GT racing gaming chair, so he chooses to use the metaphor of riding in a whip, which is slang for driving in a car. Yo, I came to peep it, you know that my lyrics the deepest, you know that I'm creeping, and when I be rhyming, they stand away. I'm animated like anime. Mac, man, you know I spit it major soon. Drop in all of these major tunes. Homie, y'all be animated, kinda like the Pokemon Charizard, hold up, wait, Salem Moon. I be going deeper when I'm all up in it, in the bars I deliver, they be too infinite. Yeah, shout out to y'all with the fat crew. Peace the new friend with the tattoos. Yeah, I'm giving you more. Yeah, first it was five, now we got one more that just came through the door. Uh, I get it live, y'all know it's new, every year's Mac will explore. Uh, y'all know I'm a rocket like a theater. Shout out to the homie who just walked through the door with the arm full of tattoos and a white beater. Oh, stop! No, stop, stop. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop, okay, 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 okay. Y'all, this might be the best Omegle bars of all time. Uh, uh, H-Mag, y'all know I'ma throw a damn piece of everybody that I'm seeing. I'll be coming off the top when I'm freeing. When I call him out now, he's leaving? H-Mag, man, you know I'm about to put it down forever. When it comes to lyrics, I'll be way too clever. Coming off the tip of this deliberate in the passion. Every time I'm rapping, I got my people laughing. Uh. What follows is a shift to a triplet flow, a switch in rhyme scheme, and the use of double entendre. As for that double entendre, some of you might not have caught it, but if you look closely enough, you'll find it. He says, drop in all of these major tunes. Tunes, yes, T-U-N-E-S is in reference to the songs he makes. However, it could also be T-O-O-N-S, as in cartoons, which makes sense because he follows that up by mentioning Pokemon, Charizard, and Sailor Moon. Harry could tell that the new guy who came into the room was unsure of what was going on. For all we know, he might have thought that his friends were watching a recording as opposed to a live performer. Harry immediately dispels this possibility though by calling him out. Keep in mind that the best way to ensure that your audience remains engaged is by removing any source of confusion. Don't get me wrong, mystery is good in poetry. Confusion rarely if ever is, so you don't want your audience to be confused. Freestyles in and of themselves are largely improvised, but that doesn't mean a rapper doesn't have some sort of game plan going into it. You notice that Harry immediately improvises even on his game plan the moment that sixth man walks in the room. Because remember, he was addressing each of the words given by the five audience members. He makes a complete detour from the original roadmap given to him in order to make sure that the sixth man felt included. Which is exactly why he has the lines that say, I'm giving you more, as in I'm giving you more than 
simply the five schemes I originally planned for. And he even says new areas Mac will explore. He's making references to the fact that he had to change things up and add to his original game plan because the sixth guy walked in. Notice that the six viewer still leaves, even after Harry took a detour from the given words to make him feel included. Harry does not take this personally though. He made light of the situation through humor. And this moment showcases the mental fortitude required of artists to thrive in any situation, especially the unpredictable ones. So if you're an artist, I advise you take notes on this fact. Uh, and they know I'm a boss Yeah, and I never take a loss Every time that I buzz, man, it's about to get rough like a game of lacrosse Glory the goal, I just spit from the soul, man, I'm holding it down and I never fall off of this Every time that I'm rhyming, you know that I'm about to last long until I hit apocalypse, yeah And y'all know that I'm heavy, I studied hip-hop, kinda like a nerd, uh I think there was five, hold up, wait, did I hit every word? Uh, I've been keeping it true, can't nobody out there do what I do Can't really remember all five, so let me hit them off with a quick review Well, first, I think I said this, uh let me bring it back to remind y'all in the mix Yeah, man, I be getting loose, uh First thing we said was subsidian, yeah Second word, that was complex Second in a row, I get rid of them Third word, that was mitochondria Fourth word, yeah, that was anime Fifth word, yeah, that was lacrosse I guess I got them all, so what can I say? Man what? Oh my god Yo, this one <laughs> It's too much It's too much What? He was like, he really went and reviewed every word just to make sure he got it. And he still kept the freestyle going. He kept the flow. I don't understand. And I'm rocking for the people when it comes to kicking lovers, man. They know my shit is lethal. I'll be live up on Omegle and I do it on the screen and shit. And every time I say I'm about to rap, you know I mean the shit. And every time I'm on it, I say ain't nobody like me. Peace to the homie front row in the white tee. Yeah, you know that I spit the shit fresh. My apologies to your friend who left. What? I personally believe that the detour he took from the original five words to incorporate the sixth guy is the reason why he was unsure whether he hit every word or not. However, he doesn't even break his flow. He doesn't break a sweat whatsoever. Unwavering confidence. The man just keeps going. He gives himself a bit of a mental break with the stanza that follows because you notice there isn't really anything of substance being said. He's kind of just giving himself time to collect his thoughts before going over everything he had said up until this point to ensure he hit every word phenomenal. His recollection of the previous use of given words is the simplest and most straightforward part of the freestyle, absent of metaphors, wordplay, hyperbole, and other poetic devices that are frequently used by Harry. This leads me to believe that these stanzas also served as a mental break, yet they simultaneously served a purpose and that they proved to Harry that he did in fact use all five words. As a result, he finally grants himself permission to conclude the freestyle with the two stanzas that follow. What makes the third freestyle so special is that he did not know what two out of the three words meant until seconds before he had to freestyle about them, yet he was still able to dedicate plenty of bars to each of them. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah, come on, hey, one, two, one, two, yeah, one, two, one, two, come on, yeah. One, two, one, two, there ain't no stopping this You know I'm rocking this until apocalypse Rappers think somehow they blocking this That thought's preposterous, uh There's no way that they could do it Cause Mac is known to pursue it And get the loosest with fluid, let's get to it, uh And when I'm rocking, they gon' go mad you truly blowing my mind with your vocab, yeah. Cause H Mac, I dropped the freshest vision, but I couldn't use two of those words without a definition. Yo, I'm the visionary, yeah. Y'all can picture Harry traveling from my brain through your whole dictionary. Hey, yo, I'm here to hold it down, yeah. I just open up my spirit, expose it. This how my soul would sound, yeah. Preposterous to think I'm losing. It's preposterous the way these rappers are abusing the industry, but I be cooking up these lyrics instantly. I'm rolling into battle like the infantry let's get it done. what stands out to me the most about this first stanza is that he's generating multi-syllabic rhymes within and between lines which means the internal rhymes are multis and the external rhymes are multis that is no joke and as i was watching this freestyle for the very first time like you can see it in my reaction the moment he gets past the first stanza i know you can see it on my face this man's about to go crazy you don't start off with a stanza like that and the rest of the stanzas in the song are doo-doo water that doesn't happen you feel me what I'm about to point out, I don't think was intentional on Harry's part, but I just wanted to point it out anyway because it showcases the oddity that is English pronunciation. Notice that how and sound are spelled very different, but they rhyme, yet soul and wood are spelled similarly, so you would think that they would rhyme, but they don't rhyme. Make that make sense. That's just English for you. 
get it done. Hey, heart and soul, yo, that's where I spit it from. So clean, they would've thought that it was written, son. Hey, yo, it's something different. Cook it up in a hurry. Hey, yo, shout to my friend with the hair that's curly. Hey, yo, it's Mac, I hold it down. And y'all know I got the flow that you enjoying. This track, what I'm destroying. All these other rappers, hella whack, they mad annoying. They got me feeling melancholy. Y'all know they so poignant. Uh, yo, competitions, we be winning them. Flavor like cinnamon. I'm delivering all the synonyms. Cause y'all be evoking the feeling of sadness. Every time you come through with whack rapping. But Mackin, be out here to counteract that. Yeah, I'ma make you smile with these mad raps. Yeah, no longer poignant when I'm spitting. Even if you in a bad mood, well, now who you kidding? See, I'm hitting, putting smiles on their faces. I said, I'm leaving listeners up in amazement. I'm on my very own path that I'm blazing. In fact, my lyrics, they be harder than the pavement. Hey, yo. The next bit of wordplay he utilizes, however, I do believe was intentional. Look at cinnamon and synonym. If you take the second and third sound, or the second and third syllable rather, in cinnamon, and you swap it, you get synonym, all right? This is what I call a sound anagram. I don't know if there's official terminology for this poetic phenomenon, but I'm calling it a sound anagram because while with a normal anagram, you're rearranging the letters in a word to create a different word, in a sound anagram, you're rearranging the sounds in the word to create a different word. Does that make sense? So I found that to be pretty phenomenal on Harry's part. Hey yo, I'm the type that you could trust I am truly plush I'm the opposite of these liars and fakes that's dubious Yeah, H-Mag, y'all know I'm about to bust it Record labels, hella dubious Y'all know they can't be trusted Well, let's be nice, yeah. let's be nice We don't have to go there I mean, you're not wrong But you didn't have to say it I mean, good lord hey, Fake rappers, they so dubious There's no way I believe them But Mac is never dubious I'm telling y'all the reason Cause every time I get loose And spit it through the tongue and the tooth up in the booth, I be telling the truth, yeah. Through the tongue and tooth, telling the truth. In these two phrases, Harry is utilizing a poetic device known as alliteration, which is the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words. In these cases, he is using the letter T at the beginning of the words repeatedly. Another poetic device he's using in the same two phrases is consonants, which is the repetition of identical or similar consonants in neighboring words. In this situation, he's repeatedly using the TH sound. Examples of this would be through, the, Tooth, booth, truth. And y'all know I'm getting fly, my G. I ain't dubious, you know you can rely on me. Yeah, I'm too sick to like ever be cured. I want to thank you for teaching me all those new words. Yeah, I'm out here to speak on the way I live. Right before you hopped on Amigo, yo, you was eating ribs. Yeah, I understand it, yo, I'm getting how you feel. Because before you hit the internet, you got to eat a meal. Yeah, I speak on the things I do and think. By the way, I like your fingernails, the blue and pink. Multiple colors combined. Every time that I rhyme, <laughs> bad vibes, I erase this. You got the bracelet. And of course, since this is Harry Mack we're talking about, he couldn't end the freestyle on any basic note. No, no, no. He had to really go all out. And I mean, homeboy went in with an acapella sequence that rivals the one at the start of the first freestyle. So that means Omigo Bars 52 had two acapella sequences. It's no wonder it's considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest. All up on your wrist and I can see it, that's for sure. h Mac, I'm getting loose with the lyrics that are pure. Let me read your sweatshirt so I can see what you repping. h Mac, from here to Georgia, I keep stepping. Yeah, I'm getting loose. I'm the reporter with the rhymes. I'ma drop a classic record like Georgia on my mind. That's a Ray Charles joint that we bumping on the daily. Every time I'm rapping off the top, I got you going crazy. Got you dancing with no beat. That there is an accomplishment. I am never dubious because I am such an honest man. Mac off the top, yo. He he is absurd once again thank you very much for teaching me words let's go okay so this final freestyle has a hook all right which is really nice because we don't get hooks too often from harry like we get them consistently just not frequently if you know what i mean but you'll notice just like with other hooks in his other freestyles there's minor differences that can be noted each time he iterates the hook my theory for this is that since he freestyled the hook as opposed to having it pre-written, he can't remember the exact wording each time he recites it. This, however, works to his advantage as the audience is always getting something new to keep them hooked. No pun intended. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, ah, uh, ah, uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
check it, uh, yeah, yeah Mad intelligent with mine They calling me a brainiac I be spitting fire, hold up, wait Pyromaniac, anywhere across the sphere So where you wanna go And when my rhymes they hear They say I'm phenomenal I'm so intelligent, calling me a brainiac I be spitting fire, hold up, wait Pyromaniac, anywhere across the sphere So where y'all wanna go When I hit your ear, you know it's phenomenal Mac off the top and I've never been a liar Pyromaniac, how I light all the fire Coming off the top of the motherfucking brain I be a dragon the way I spit flames H-Mac, I got the lyrics I can't catch Ready to strike like a motherfucking mash H-Mac, y'all know I'm about to run you over Cause my tongue is like a flamethrower Uh, and y'all know I'm a pro You with this entire verse H-Mac, I be coming off the top Go up high, then blow up like a firework Uh, Pyromaniac, I lift you higher Not no liar, I aspire to be the one That lights the track on the fire I'm the rapper that they admire Listen, I'ma open y'all up, no pliers H-Mac, I just do what I feel When they hear other lyrics on the track Uh, that's where all the truth is revealed Okay, there was a moment there that almost sounded like gibberish, and I know I could not have been the only person who noticed that. Uh, and y'all know I'm a pro, you with this entire verse. I would have said with 100% certainty that Harry got tongue-tied on this incomprehensible word if it weren't for the phrase from the previous stanza which states, I got the lyrics that they can't catch, as in lyrics that they can't understand. And that's the crazy thing about his freestyles. They are so lyrically dense that there are some times where there are reasonable explanations that can be found for what would otherwise be deemed a verbal blunder. So was that a mistake? Normally I would have said yes, but that line from the previous stanza kind of explains that away. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's tough, it's tough. Let me know what y'all think. Was that a mistake or was that intentional? I noticed that Harry changed the rhyme scheme fairly early in this freestyle, earlier than in the previous ones in this Omegle bars. He goes from an A-A-B-B rhyme scheme to suddenly an A-A-A-A rhyme scheme, an A-B-C-B rhyme scheme, and it changes even after that, but we'll get into that in a second. I'm doing me and I got your head nodding Coming off the top with freeze, dog, it ain't no problem Intelligent with mine, hey, they call me a brainiac Like the check of fire, all the way, pyromaniac Anywhere across the sphere, to where you wanna go When my lyrics hit your air, they say I'm phenomenal, yeah Okay, so I work a miracle, I'm grand imperial, I'm getting lyrical I just be known, across the whole planet, yeah, they know my name Across the whole spherical, shape of the earth Y'all know I'm dropping the verse I do this shit in rehearse, ayy Every time I rhyme, it's a whole league experience I'm about to take out a church, let's go When I kick my lyrics, I'ma make y'all think I said, I need three words They was like, wait, no, hold my drink Yeah, off to of the top, I'ma bring this shit Those are good words, well, you an English kid I guess it makes sense, so thanks for the vocab Every time I rhyme off top, they gon' go mad, yeah Harry subverts expectations by avoiding end rhyme in the first stanza and instead has the internal rhyme do the heavy lifting. By being unpredictable about the placement of rhymes, he is ensuring that the audience doesn't become bored from routine audible patterns. The first stanza serves as a setup for the end rhyme that follows in the next stanza. Every single line in this stanza has a word association for verse. There's verse, obviously, unrehearsed, which is in reference to rehearsals, there's holy, and there's church, which are also word associations for verse when you consider the Bible verse side of things. Harry's insane memory and attentiveness is on full display as he recounts the interaction that he had with his audience prior to rapping for them. It's easy for an audience to connect with an artist if the artist makes the viewers or listeners feel seen. And that's the power of stanzas like this. It strengthens his connection with the audience in ways that lyrical gymnastics alone cannot. Yeah, and you know I do it often whenever I'm rocking. I got your jaw dropping, uh Y'all know I'm about to let you listen They were like, both of us are musicians I was like, cool, do your thing She was like, yeah, both of us sing But the list would be infinite If you tried to name all of your instruments I'm the illest and I can't fuck with that Going over domes, kind of like your bucket hat h Mac, when I'm on it, man, they love the way I'm ripping And while I'm kicking, freestyles, you be sipping Uh, and you know I keep my rhymes true I be shining bright like the light right behind you h Mac, I'm on it and I'm going where they want to go And they know my lyrics are phenomenal What? I'm intelligent, they call me me a brainiac, like this check on fire, hold up, wait, pyromaniac, anywhere across the sphere, so where y'all wanna go, when my lyrics hit your ear, y'all know I'm phenomenal, I'm mad intelligent, Matt is the brainiac, I'm spitting flames, hold up, I'm a pyromaniac, anywhere across the sphere, so where you wanna go, when my lyrics hit your ear, y'all know my shit's phenomenal, I'm gone.
Hey, yo, Harry. I just want to say thank you so much for everything you do. My channel would not be where it's at right now had it not been for the content you put out that I could even react to in the first place, all right? It's no surprise that you have over a thousand reactors on YouTube at this point. I mean, your content's amazing. And me being a poet, getting to see your lyrical gymnastics, your wordplay, your different poetic devices that you utilize, your metaphors, it's just mind blowing. You've improved my work. All right, you've improved my poetry. My art has elevated because I've been studying you, because I've been streaming you on Spotify, because I've been reacting to you on YouTube, listening to you while I work out. It's had a major impact on me. And I've also learned the importance of being inspirational to my audience, having a positive impact on my audience. You've shown me exactly how to do that. And I can't thank you enough. It is no surprise to me at all that you have over a thousand reactors on YouTube at this point. Keep doing what you're doing. You're going places, man. Like, ah, uh, I'm so glad the world is starting to see the greatness that is Harry Mack. So again, thank you for all you do. Deuces.